right, you guys can turn to Psalm 64. Another one of David's psalms. No real background context given to us for this one. Um, but I want to start. I want to give a little bit of the introduction before we, before we read it. Let me see if you guys can finish this uh, expression. Sticks and stones, but words will never hurt me. Right, that's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? Words hurt, and they can hurt bad. And words often hurt far more than sticks and stones. Because, you know, most of the time you get hit with a stick or a stone, you, you'll heal up. You know, even if something gets broken, hey, broken bones heal. God made our bodies, they heal wonderfully. Um, and it's, it's not something we can do is just will that words won't hurt us anymore and I'm just not going to care anymore because we've all tried that and we've all failed at that, right? What other people say matters. It impacts us. But I think there is a way for words, that the sting of words to lose their effectiveness, for words to not hurt us. And it's not because we, we've just become tough in our, you know, we've got thicker skin now and it doesn't bother us as much because you can take the most thick-skinned person. And I guarantee you there's somebody somewhere that could say a certain thing that will get to them. And when we look at this Psalm of David, it's, it's clearly a time when other people are speaking against him. Okay, nobody's attacking him physically. He's not surrounded by enemies. Nobody's uh, trying to take his life at this moment. But when we read through this, you're going to hear him say a lot of things about that. He says, they wet their tongues like swords. You know, not wet as in put water on it, but like you wet your sword, um, getting it ready. It, they, he said, they aim bitter words like arrows, he says that they, they talk of laying snares. This is, there's clearly the rumor mill going about. People are speaking about David. People are saying hurtful things about David. People are trying to harm him verbally. But he also focuses on words in other ways beyond just the, the hurtful words that are coming towards him. He calls out to God. He says, hear my voice, O God. He's using his words in a different way to combat this. We see that the righteous people are, are told to tell what God has done. Speak of the things God has done. Use your words to declare what God has done. He speaks of righteous people rejoicing in God. And you can really see the contrast between what, what hurtful, mean people are saying with hurtful words and what David is doing in his response to it. And it kind of gives us a glimpse into how David at least acknowledged and dealt with hurtful things that were being said about him. And let's be real, you know, hurtful can be an understatement. Um, people can get downright brutal and say mean, nasty things. And, and it's hard to overcome those things, even as an adult. And it's even worse if, if it's young kids that hear such mean, hurtful things, because those tend to stick with you and shape you. And, and there's, there's freedom from that, though. God brings healing. He brings forgiveness. He brings release. And, and not in a sense of, I'm just going to pretend like I don't care anymore. But in a sense, I know what was said to me, and I'm going to genuinely forgive it. And let the Lord bring healing. You know, and sometimes people talk about, you know, the, the scars that they have. And, and usually when, when they speak of scars, they're, most of the time they're meaning wounds that are still there. Because if it's a scar, I just say, well, that's wonderful. Because you know what scars mean? That wound is healed. Right? You don't get scars unless a wound is healed. So having scars is, is very natural. We all, we're, we're going to have those. Um, having an open wound from somebody's words is kind of a different story. But anyway, let's take a look at Psalm 64 and see what David says and then how we can kind of, uh, what we can glean from this. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Notice he's not, he's not saying preserve my life from the enemy. Preserve my life from the dread 
of the enemy. And you know how, I mean, that's how it works, right? When people are saying these mean, nasty things about you, you just dread it. You dread to, to see them, to think of them, to be around them. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, we have accomplished a diligent search, for the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. But God shoots his arrow at them. They are wounded suddenly. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exalt. So, what do we do with this? First off, we need to accept that people will say mean things. Okay? We just need to state the obvious, but we have to accept it. You know, we, we go through times in life where we, we think, you know, God, are, is this ever going to end? No, actually, it's not. You know, it's going to save the prayer time. It's not going to end in this life. People are going to be people. We, we've been promised by Jesus that we will have tribulation in this life. Paul said everyone who desires to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will face persecution. People are going to be mean to you. They will. And we just have to know that and come to grips with it and be okay with it. Doesn't mean we have to like it. There are a lot of things that are going to be the case that we don't have to like. And, and you'd probably be a little off if you did like it. But we have to accept it. Okay, it, it's not going to end. And we have to know it and we have to be okay with it. And you might think, well, how are we going to be okay with people constantly saying bad things, mean things, hurtful things, untrue things, people lie about us? Ultimately, we have to find our value in who we are in Jesus and what he says about us, not in what other people say. That's really the biggest root to it is if if I'm deeply valuing David's perspective on me and then he says something hurtful, I'm crushed because I was looking to that. I was leaning on that. And, and he just completely obliterated me with the thing he said or, or what I heard him say to somebody else or what he said to them and then they said it and it made its way back. It, I'm devastated, not just because of what was said, but who said it. And that, that adds to it. But... If ultimately all of those things are very secondary to me because I know what God thinks of me and his opinion is the one that matters to me, then when somebody else says something, it's pretty irrelevant. You know, not that you're irrelevant, David, but, you know, hopefully if somebody says something sharp and mean towards me, it it will have little impact because not because it may not be true. Maybe I could learn from it. Maybe it is true. But it doesn't have to be devastating and wound my heart because I'm, I'm secure and confident and comfortable in who I am in Christ. And that's the ultimate thing. That, that's the sure thing to where other people's words, other people's comments, other people's opinions don't matter. It's because we know who we are in Christ And that is what defines us. And if we are ultimately satisfied and at peace just with God and who we are in him, then what is there to upset that apple cart? Nothing at all. So you need to accept that people will say mean things, but you you can be okay with it. You really can. You can be okay with it. And I know some that may seem like a long ways away before I could ever be that comfortable and that not bothered. That's okay. One day at a time, growing, maturing in the Lord. Find some scriptures that reaffirm who you are in Christ and that his opinion is what matters and that he, he values you because you're made in his image and he loves you as one of his children. Meditate on those things. 
constantly keep that before you until your heart and your mind begin to change with it. Because then you can accept that people are going to be mean. Secondly, you need to believe that God will deal with mean people. Okay? We have to believe that. And I know we know that, but sometimes we don't believe it. You know, I think there's a different, we, we know that that's the case, but we don't always live like that's the case. You know, we really, we really don't buy it sometimes, and we need to buy it. There, there are so many times scripture says that vengeance is the Lord's. He says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. When people are saying these things, you know, we, we take two routes usually. Number one, we want to get them back. Okay, that, that's the first thing. We want to be, we want to be vengeful. We want to be um, responsive. We want to uh, en- engage aggressively. The second thing is we, we get defensive. We want to defend ourselves. We want to expose that that's not true. We want to make sure people think highly of us. You know, but again, if, if we don't really care what other people think, then we're free to not worry about our reputation. Because my, I don't need to control my reputation. I just need to love Jesus and love people and let God take care of my reputation. That, that's not on me. He'll do that because vengeance is his. Believing that God will deal with them will free us from concern for a reputation. It'll free us from harboring bitterness. You know, if we know God's going to deal with that anyway, we, we don't have to be bitter towards them. We don't have to harbor unforgiveness. We can be free to forgive knowing that if they never repent, God will deal with them. And we can be at peace with that. See, when you're, when you're holding unforgiveness, you're really saying, I, I wish they would get what they deserve. I want to see punishment and harm come to them. And I want to see them suffer for it. When you've forgiven somebody, that doesn't mean you pretend like they didn't do it. But what you say is, I know what they did, but I'm not wishing harm on them anymore. And if I know God's going to take care of it, if they need to be punished for that in some way or another, God will deal with it because God is going to be just and every wrong is going to be made right. And if we believe that God will deal with those mean people, then we're, we're free from so many of those things that, that actually only affect us, not them. You know, if you're withholding forgiveness, the person that you haven't forgiven, they could probably care less. It just eats your heart alive and doesn't bother them at all. Forgive them, even if it's just so they don't get the satisfaction of knowing you're still dealing with unforgiveness. You know, lean into the Lord and ask him for help to do that. But knowing that he'll take care of it, if they need to be dealt with for what they've done, he'll deal with it. And thirdly, commit that you will rejoice in the Lord. We should rejoice even when things are still being said. Okay, and this is something you see. Again, look at, look at what David says here in verse 10. This is the last thing, you know, verses 1 through 6. We're all about the, the hurtful things people are going to do. 7, 8, and 9, we're talking about what God is going to do and how we can trust that. Well, verse 10, he says, Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. When do you take refuge? When are you seeking refuge? When you're being attacked. And he's saying to rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. In other words, even when you're being attacked, even when you're seeking the Lord for refuge, even when these sharp, bitter words are coming like arrows, even when their sword and and their tongue is coming like a sword, you're taking refuge in the Lord, but you're also rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoicing in him, worshiping him, glorifying him, even though it's still happening and you're still seeking refuge. Think about that. Usually, we, we want to run and duck first, and then once God has kept us safe, then we rejoice. Well, he's saying rejoice and take refuge at the same time. Don't wait until God deals with it. Because what if, what if the dealing with it doesn't happen until judgment day? Okay, does that mean we withhold God's praise for, for this situation and, until judgment day? No. 
Now we rejoice and we praise the Lord for his goodness and the things that he's done. And, and we can praise him if we truly believe that he's going to deal with it. We can praise him like it's already been done because of our confidence in him that he'll do what he said he's going to do. If God said he's going to do it, it, might, it, it pretty much already is an established reality. Because he's never failed to keep a promise. He keeps his word 100% of the time. So if he says, I will make every wrong right, he will. And we can thank him for it, even though it's not done, because of the high confidence we have that he will do it. But you don't have to wait until he deals with it to rejoice. You can rejoice even when that's happening. Not that you're rejoicing because it's happening, but you're rejoicing because he's going to deal with it. And that's a significant thing. So let me read through this again. And I just want you to think through those things, accepting that people will say mean things. Listen to this. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from dread of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the throng of evildoers who wet their tongues like swords, who aim bitter words like arrows, shooting from ambush at the blameless, shooting at him suddenly and without fear. They hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see them? They search out injustice, saying, we have accomplished a diligent search for the inward mind and heart of a man are deep. Those things are realities. We need to accept people are going to treat us like that. But listen to what God will do. But God shoots his arrows at them. They are wounded suddenly. They are brought to ruin with their own tongues turned against them. All who see them will wag their heads. Then all mankind fears. They tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. So people will say what they say, but God will do what he does. And then we will do what we should do. Let the righteous one rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart exalt. Exalt.